Welcome to our not so live show. Uh, YouTube Live isn't working tonight, and this is the best we can do. Okay, like I said, uh, we couldn't get the YouTube Live to work. I tried everything I could think of. Uh, it's just broken. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, nothing with my OBS is working. I even tried to use my, uh, just using it right through the webcam, uh, directly through YouTube, and that didn't work. I used the Classic Studio. I used the Beta Studio. It doesn't work. So now we're doing a uh, almost like a live show. Uh, this is the way we would normally do our live show. Uh, but this one is pre-recorded. But I, I, we just had to get something up. I mean, it's Tuesday. Um, we're supposed to have live shows on Tuesday. So this is the best I, this is the best I got. Uh, so one of the things that we wanted to talk about live, but we can't uh, because YouTube's broken, uh, is the books that we are going to choose uh, for the giveaway. Uh, in case you didn't watch uh, last week's live show, uh, we decided to do a contest type giveaway and the conditions of the contest is that if you uh, go through our videos and you pick uh, your favorite video that we made uh, the one that you like the best then after you decide uh, which video is the one that you like the best uh, share it to your Facebook uh, your Instagram or your Twitter uh, and then once you've done that uh, you can even come back to this video and just let us know, and we'll put you in the drawing. And then there's going to be a drawing, and once we hit a thousand subscribers, the whole the whole point of this is to get more people to watch our videos, so we might be able to get more subscribers. And once we hit a thousand subscribers, we're going to do a special live show, assuming that it's working. Hopefully, it's working. Right. And then uh, if it is working, uh, we'll do a, a special live show when we hit a thousand. And then that's when we're going to announce the winner of the contest. Uh, so all of it's about hitting a thousand. So we're going to give away three books. Three books is what we're going to give away. Uh, the question is, what three books are we going to give away? And it's going to be to one person. Uh, whoever wins the drawing, uh, you know, uh, they get to, to have that. Now, I just want to throw this in extra. Uh, well, actually, it's not really extra, this part. Uh, we also included, if you don't have an Instagram, if you don't have a Twitter, if you don't have a Facebook, if all you have is YouTube, uh, if you can find a way to make a video and do a review on one of our videos and uh, talk about why you liked it and let people know where they can find it so they can watch it and as long as you put that video up uh, on your channel uh, you can do that and let us know and we'll put you in the drawing uh, you know hopefully you got followers and uh, we can get a few maybe views out of it uh, maybe uh, some subscribers but I'm just trying to make it to where as many people can join as possible uh, but I want to add this this is something I didn't say last week and I was thinking about it since last week, and I think it's a really good idea. If you can actually share it to multiple platforms, like if you share it to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and you do a uh, video review, for each thing that you do, uh, we will count that as a separate entry. That sounds like a good idea. That way you can have one two, three, maybe four different entries into the contest. So the more you share, uh, the more entries you get. And uh, I'm also going to expand it. Uh, if you want to pick your favorite video and your second favorite or your third favorite, as much as you can promote us with each promotion, with each promotion that you give, whether it be on, on one of these platforms, with every single promotion that you give, you let us know about it. I'll put you in the drawing, and you'll have additional entries. That's a 
good idea. So now you're increasing your chances of winning the prize. All right. I might put a little incentive in there, I think. And like I said, three books. So we're going to talk about the books that we have, and we're going to go through the um, process of selecting three out of all of these really good books. So what do we have first, honey? Um, this is a older. Um, this is a reproduction of a older book. Uh, it was reproduced um, in the seventies, and it's a reproduction of a. Uh, 1935 book, and it was reproduced in the 70s, uh, or, or should I, published again in the se in 1973, and it's called Five Acres and Independence. Okay, get a good close of that. Five Acres and Independence. And it's a really good book. It's got everything from pruning trees to uh, really old uh, ways of doing irrigation, of um, laying pipes in for <laughs> irrigation and different ways that they did things back then. Um, I'm sure there's a wealth of information in there. It also shows you how to do um, um, collect spring water up above your house and, and have a pipe run down to your house to get the pressure. shows you how to do all that kind of stuff. And animals. It does a whole bunch of stuff in the back about animals. It's a really good book. Right. And this is by M.G. Keynes uh, with a bachelor's and a master's. Oh. And it also says, a subtitle, it says, an underground classic. Oh, no, that's just a, a description. Yeah, it says, an underground classic, long out of print. Yeah. Over one million copies sold, illustrated. So it's out of print. Uh, we've got a copy. Yep. And it says, a practical guide to the selection and management of the small farm. Yep. So how can you not, not, not like that? It's Five Acres and in Independence, a practical guide to the selection and management of the small farm. I mean, wow, we're, we're giving this away? Yep. Wow, we're giving this away, folks. This looks like a pretty good book. All right, so that's uh, one of the books that we're considering. Okay, what's next? We have two here that basically go together, and it's um, they're put out by um, Scott and Helen Nearing, and the authors are um, and they um, they're the authors of uh, Living the Good Life. This one is Living the Good Life, and this one was published. This is their first book when they were younger, and um, has a picture of them when they were younger. Okay. And this, they're very famous homesteaders from the, uh, when it was, uh, homesteading was really big in the 70s, 60s, and 70s, uh, when there was a bunch of hippies <laughs> around. It was kind of got big back in the 70s. And um, this is when they got popular writing books, but they started, they were like um, their original homesteaders. They started doing it like in the 30s and the 40s. And, uh, but anyways, they wrote a book, and this one's how they, they put their homestead together. Um, built their own house, um, bartered for food, and made their own silverware and, and um, bowls and just a very... Um, now, they are vegetarians. They were uh, vegetarians. Um, we're not. <laughs> but they have a lot of good information in there. There's some black and white photos that they've taken. They did Sugar Shack. They built their own Sugar Shack, too. Uh, they would take their maple... They had a what they call a sugar bush, which is a whole grove of sugar maples, and they would tap them every year, and then they would barter with their neighbors for the stuff that they couldn't grow or make or get, and they would barter the maple syrup with their neighbors. And so this is part two. Yep, that's Con when they're older. Continuing the good life. Yep. All right. They built another house. They sold that house and started a whole new homestead when they got older and built a brand new house. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, okay. they go together. They All should right, go that's together. A, that's like, we're going to count this as one book. Yeah, they should go together. Okay, next book, honey? Um. Oh, this is a very good book. Uh, it's tattered. We're going to fix it up. We're going to fix it up. But um, online, I found that book for like, they want $75 for that book. I think it's um, pretty certain. I'm definitely sure it's out of print now. It's, um, this was a book, this book right here was a book I had when I was a girl. I had a French Lop Rabbit when I was a girl. 
and my dad bought me this book right here. Now, I found a better copy of it um, at a thrift store, but my dad bought that book for me, and that's why it's a little tattered. I, when I was a girl, I would read all the pages about how to care for the rabbits. I kind of skipped over the eating part and how to butcher them. I didn't like that part back then when I was a girl. I thought it was terrible. We like it now. We like it now. But um, anyways, I held on to this book ever since I was a teenager. I had a French lot, and his name was Cracker, um, her name was Cracker Jack. And so I used this book to learn about rabbits and how to care for her. Yeah, this one's uh, by Anne uh, Kenabel. Um, yeah, this is a really good book. Um, I don't know. We might um, save this one for a future giveaway uh, because it is such a nice book. I mean, yeah, it's kind of falling apart, but the information in this is so good. Uh, and like you said, um, $75 for I, a copy. Yeah, I did find it. Now, that was what I found. Maybe it was just a fluke high one, but yeah, that's what I found. It said it was $75. Yeah. This oh one this one might not be a 1,000 uh, subscriber book. This one might be more like a five or 10,000 subscriber book. Uh, we might have to put this one aside. Okay. Because it's just okay, okay dear. Just so good. So I think that one will be put aside. I'll put it over here. Because I'm just telling you, for a thousand subscribers, a seventy-five dollar book, it just sounds crazy. I think yeah, I even signed it, Kelly Campbell. <laughs> okay. Autographed by the non-author. It was my maiden name. <laughs> okay. Um, that one is a cookbook, but it's also a gardening book, all at the same time. Um, it's from the 70s also. Like I told you, it was a big thing in the 60s and the 70s, um, homesteading. It really was a big thing. And so that's why I got on eBay, and I would search these books out, and I would buy them a long time ago, before I even met Tracy. It was years before I met Tracy. Here's an ice cream recipe. Oh, homemade I ice cream? Can, I don't know if they can uh, read You can't that. see it, dear. Yeah, they can't see it. They can't see it. Ooh. Good one. <laughs> Trust us, it's in there. <laughs> yep. Uh, so this one's called Your Own Kitchen and Garden Survival Book. I was a prepper back then. Okay. The Energy Savers Guide for Making Things Better by Margaret King Hunter and Virginia W. Williams. So let me say it again. Your Own Kitchen and Garden Survival Book, The Energy, the energy Savers Guide to Making Things Better. That's a big, long title. I bought it because I was a prepper back then, and it really told you, uh, helped you um, can it. I think there's canning instructions yep. in there. It says here it's got uh, full oven cooking, bulk buying, freezing and storing, reusing and recycling. That's why I bought it right there for all that prepper stuff. Uh, it has grease, a griddle with a potato, <laughs> uh, cokes, a just-baked cake from a pan, uh, fill out shriveling potatoes, and get the most from herbs and spices. That's why I got it, because it sounded interesting. Yeah, that's a good one. Nice little cookbook with a lot of extra tips in it. Yep, it's got gardening tips and recipes. So, uh, okay. we'll put that one over yep. there. There's the ones we've gone through. Okay, okay. this one. Okay, this one is called uh, Country Home and Small Farm Handbook by Hollis Lee. So It's a thick book. There you go. There we go. And, yep, pretty thick. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you were showing it all right, dear. There you go. There go. Yep. <clears throat> so this is pretty good. Uh, this one, um, oh, it doesn't say. That's for other books here. All right. It says here, if you own just a few acres or a large estate, you probably already know about the rich rewards of country living. <laughs> Open space, fresh air, and the chance to farm, garden, or raise animals on your own land. Uh, the series of country home and farm guides uh, collected here in a handy single volume. So this is a single volume with a lot of different guides in it. It says, for the first time, provides all the necessary information on a broad range of projects and activities. Stuff like planting a country place, crops on a few acres, vegetable farming, nuts, berries, and grapes, orchard handbook, the pleasure horse, cattle, sheep, and hogs, goats, rabbits, and chickens. Yep. 
That's a nice book. Okay. All right. And this is going to be a hard decision and narrow it down just to three. Yeah, I have two pals of them. Two, two pals. 18 books. I think there's 18. Okay, now this one um, is a very good one. She has a lot of good information in it. She wrote it like a story. Like, like um, she's got characters in it. And, and then as she, the characters talk about things, they show you how to do things, how to build things. Um, uh, she was a very famous, um, or I thought she was famous because I enjoyed their blog. A blog. It was a blog back in, um, I knew them in like, in, in like 98, um, right before the, uh, 2000 or early 2000s. They have a really good blog about homesteading and they, oh, they wrote in, um, Countryside Magazine. I really, really love, you got th three magazines that I mainly bought a long time ago. It was Countryside, Mother Earth News, and, um, one other one. Countryside, Mother Earth News. Anyways, and there was another one. But Countryside talked about real, actual homesteading and gardening and chickens and everything. Um, and, but anyways, that, she, they wrote for Countryside. All right, so this is called Homesteading Adventures, A Guide for Doers and Dreamers yes. by Sue uh, Robichaud. They have an underground house. You can, uh, yeah, up a little higher. See their underground house? They built that. They hand built that. That's uh, all rammed to earth, and they have a gr greenhouse on it. They live up in the deep, up in the north, I think in the Michigan Peninsula. The, the, what do they call that? The MP? No. Hey, we're going to have to speed this up, honey. We okay, can't sorry. go into all this detail with sorry. all these books. Sorry. There's just so many of them. If we went to all this detail with all these books, uh, we'd probably get a couple hours worth of video. I'm so sorry. I love my books. I'm just going to go through the basic tips here. On this book, it says it has basic cabin, underground house, greenhouse, organic gardening, uh, seed saving, eating from the garden, solar electric, solar mm -hmm. food drying, Solar cooking, wine making, oh, not really too big on that one, uh, livelihood, food storage, and a whole lot more. So this, this book has a lot to offer. Uh, next. Okay. Okay, the next one is <laughs> called uh, Gardens, Garden Ways Zucchini Cookbook. Do you like zucchini? I hope so, because uh, this one says uh, too many zucchini and other squash. Impossible. <laughs> If you have this cookbook, you'll want to plant more next season. Here are the recipes for appetizers, snacks, casseroles, breads, salads, soups, stews, pickles, relish, even desserts, and other sweets. 10,000 casserole combinations using zucchini. And there's just more and more and more. This is all things zucchini. This is from the 60s or the 70s also during that time period. Okay. Another. Uh, it's a rare one. You somewhat rare, somewhat rare book. Yep, somewhat rare. Okay. Oh, now this one. The complete tightwad Cassette. If anyone knows about, uh, I've ever heard about them. They used to have a magazine that you can buy, and you would pay them, and they would put out this Cassette that um, that taught you how to save money. And we're talking like down to like ripping toilet paper two ply in half, um, that kind of crazy saving. So it has all kinds of interesting ways to save money. Tight what gets it? And it says the original price was thirty eight dollars and ninety seven cents, and it was on sale for nineteen ninety nine. I didn't pay that much. I got it at a Goodwill. <laughs> right, but still, I mean, this is a really thick book. And it has all kinds of information. It's like a phone book. It it's is. like I'm holding a phone book in my hand. Yep. Yep. That's going to cost a lot of the shipping, I tell you. Okay. These two. All right. Now, these are uh, Foxfire books. Uh, we got Foxfire 4 and Foxfire 5. There was three, but I kept number the number three because it had all these old um, games. I like right. playing with children. So uh, this one, uh, Foxfire 4, is about fiddle making, spring houses, horse trading, 
sassafras tea, berry buckets. How to make a berry bucket, yeah. Uh, gardening and further affairs of plain living. And then Foxfire 5 is iron making, blacksmithing, flintlock rifles, bear hunting. You want to go hunt for bear. And other affairs of plain living. So these are, um, I guess the best way to describe these is these are very outdoorsmen, um, living off the land type books. They were actually books done down in North Carolina and Virginia um, by college students back in the 60s and the 70s. And they went and to try to preserve their history. And they would go and, and, and there's lots of interviews in here of older people that would actually tell their stories of growing up and how they did things all through how their parents did things, how they did things growing up. And they would actually teach them skills. And it's all in here. Lots of pictures, lots of, um, I actually have the Foxfire cookbook also. And that one I'm definitely not letting go. Okay, of. so we're going to have to go a little bit faster through these. Sorry. We're talking too much, honey. Okay. Okay. We have the Self-Sufficiency Specialist, the Essential Guide to Designing and Planning for your off-grid self-reliance by A and G Bridgewater. Self-sufficiency off-grid book. That is a British book. It's very interesting. Next. There you go. Okay, so this one is called. Uh, wow, it's got a lot of stuff on here. It's called Cut Your Spending. You know. Uh, the Lazy to, Way. We all need to do that. So it's Cut Your Spending: The Lazy Way by Leslie Hagen. It says, hassle-free tricks to spend less and have more. Build a budget you can stick to and reserve your pennies for that rainy day. Boom. There it is. Next book. There you go. Okay, now we have uh, Rodale's Naturally Great Foods Cookbook by Nancy Albright. Uh, this one says the best foods to use and how to use them in over 400 original recipes. It's a very um, healthy food. Um, it has the ha healthy alter alternatives for sugar, and um, it just it it's just a really good cookbook. And who doesn't like old cookbooks with really old looking writing in it? Uh, you probably can't see that, but it's got some. It's got a really uh, old flair look to it, so I think you might enjoy just having it. Okay, next. This is called the Introductory Horticulture, third edition. This is more like a textbook. It actually is. Um, my friends uh, gave that, left that for me. Um, they are homeschoolers, and this actually has quizzes in it that you can take and, and quiz your children on. So um, it's actually more like a homeschooler book, um, but also has lots of good information just for gardeners. So... Um, yeah, there's tests in there, and like it goes through like it's like a textbook. You goes through chapters, you read the chapters, you learn from it, and at the very end, there's these um, quizzes on it. Yep. So it is a textbook, as you see there, and it was copyrighted 1988. Next book. That's a good book. Okay, here's another book that looks kind of like a textbook. Uh, it's got a lot of weight to it. It's pretty heavy. It's called the uh, Maria, uh, Maria Rodale's Organic Gardening, your seasonal companion to creating a beautiful and delicious garden. It's got a lot of very good pictures in it. It's almost like eye candy. You know, it's very um, encouraging. I used to read this through the winter wow. time. This is like a, a really thick magazine. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. It's like a magazine in there. Yeah, it's a great book. It really is. It would encourage me and get me excited for springtime, give me ideas on what I would do to my garden. It has salad. It has recipes in it. Um, it even goes down to making salves in it, um, natural salves for um, babies' bottoms and, and all kinds of really good recipes in it. That's a nice one. Next. Uh, that one's just perennial flowers. Okay, this says successful gardening A to Z of perennials. Reader's Digest. Boom. Next. This is it. So. This is the last one. Okay. Because we're going to have to go through these and make a decision on which three we're going to pick. Uh, this one's called Practical Small Gardens. Everything you need to know when planning, designing, 
and planting a small garden and how to put your ideas into action by Peter McCoy. McCoy. So this one is also a pretty nice book. It's got some really good illustrations. It's very good illustrations. It shows you step by step how to do things, how to pick out your materials. Very good how to book. Wow, why are we giving this one away? We have another one? <laughs> this one looks good. Oh, well, I can keep it if you want me to. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> this looks like a really good one. Okay. All right, well, anyway. It shows you how to make gravel paths and mm -hmm. how to make um, brick paths and to uh, make raised beds. Right. And how to container garden. Really nice. All right, so those are all of our books that we have to choose from. And we have to get it down to three. All right, so. Okay, so what we're going to do is kind of like what we've started already with the rabbit book. Uh, the ones that are really, really, really. I mean, we're not going to give away the, you know, necessarily the worst ones we've got. No. But you got to realize it's only a thousand subscribers. It's not like we're hitting forty thousand subscribers or anything. So we give out like three hundred dollars worth of books. It doesn't quite seem to make that much sense at a thousand subscribers. But there's not. But we do want to give away three books, and whatever three we pick, no matter which three we pick. It's going to be worth a lot more than a thousand subscribers. I'll tell you that. Most people don't give away gifts like this at this stage. I think I know which ones are. So, uh, let's see. I think the Five Acres to Independence is definitely going to be one. Yeah, that I one, think that's a good one. To that share. one's really good. Uh, it really kind of exemplifies uh, one of the main reasons why uh, we are a YouTube channel, Micro Farm Starter. Uh, getting a small farm up and running, and this is how to get a small five-acre farm up and running, and it's got a lot of good wisdom in here. And basically, if you know nothing uh, whatsoever, this will give you a very, very good head start in the right direction. And it's good to have knowledge, so I think this is going to be a very good, uh, very good one to pick. So we have two more to pick. I think that. Oh, you're going to pick that one? Okay. I think that's a good one. Yep. My wife picks this one. The Self-Sufficiency Specialist, The Essential Guide to Designing and Planning for Off-Grid Self-Reliance. What it mainly is, is it's just, um, it brings you into a topic that's good for homesteading. It gives you some good information, but it doesn't go in deep. So what it does is it whets your appetite, and it gives you some idea, and then you can de uh, go and get other books or get online and go in deeper. Some of it looks pretty deep. They got some diagrams and everything like that in here. So shows you how uh, to prune bushes. Uh, you might not think it's going that deep, but uh, it's because we already have a lot of knowledge already. Uh, but yeah, this has got a lot of really uh, duck houses. Yeah, how to how to build a house, why you need an air vent, and diseases. Uh, you know, different. Here's a uh, housing option. Uh, one that looks like an A-frame, and another one that's square. I don't know if you can see it. Probably there not. You go. There you go. But. Yep. Yeah, it's got some really good things in here. So I think it's a really, really good book. So that's number two. Uh, we got one more to go. Um, let's see here. You can... Let me take a look. Kind of lay them out for me. Okay. And then I will uh, take a look at it real quick and kind of size up. Okay. Try to balance it out. So we got self-sufficiency off-grid. They got five acres in independence. Uh, so that's two things. We don't want to cover too much of the same ground. Um, let's see here. Wow. Um, where's that one with the penny pinching? Not the big one. Oh, that one right there. Cut your spending. Oh, really? You want to do that one? Yep. I think that kind of rounds it out. Uh, the uh, Cut Your Spending, The Lazy Way, uh, Hassle-Free Tricks to Spend Less and Have More. Uh, when you're going off-grid or you're doing like small uh, small farming, it's a good idea to know how to save money. And uh, there's a lot of good ideas in here. Uh, and some of these things you might already be doing. Uh, but just some really good uh, common sense ways to save money and not spend money all the time. And still have everything that you need and actually have really nice things. And so it might give you, and 
you might see if you look at it, it might be a little bit outdated, uh, but the concepts are still going to be the same. Uh, concepts will be the same even if it's talking about things from a long time ago. All right, so that's going to help out. So now we have uh, uh, being frugal, uh, cut your spending, uh, self-sufficiency, off-grid stuff, and we also have uh, the five acres and in independence. Now, another thing about the self-sufficiency specialist, it talks about uh, the self-sufficient house, off-grid water, off-grid energy, wood-burning stoves, solar collectors, wind turbines, geothermal heating, water turbines, uh, super insulating your home, recycling waste, uh, growing organic garden crops, keeping animals, keeping bees, pickles and preserves, uh, making soap and candles, A and G Bridgewater. So a lot of really good topics. I think whoever gets these three books are going to be very satisfied. Um, I don't know how much these are probably worth, but I would say with all three of these books, it's probably going to be close to about 80 or $90. Well, the one I don't think you can actually find anymore. Which one? This one? Yeah. This one's rare. That one you can't find anymore. So we're giving away a rare book. Who does that? Who gives away rare books? I don't think so. I haven't looked for it in a while, but I mean, it's not a common book. I'll, I will tell you that much. Well, it says right on this reprint, it says it's out of print. Well, it says reprint. long. It says long out of print. Well, then they reprinted it in right. the 70s. Right, I understand that, but it was reprinted in the 70s, which at that point was long out of print. Uh, do you think it's out of print now? Probably. Yes. 1973 was the last time it was printed again. Yep. 1973 mm -hmm. uh, in October. Uh, so, you know, and it's like I've said before, if you want to find really good wisdom for uh, doing some homesteading, uh, gardening, uh, you know, doing things uh, the old fashioned way. I'm, I'm not talking about industrial way. I'm talking about pre-industrial. I'm talking about the old timers that remember the old ways of doing things before everyone got all hooked on chemicals, right? Right now, it seems like all the farmers are hooked on chemicals, uh, but before they got hooked on chemicals, they had some great ideas on how to do things. So if this was out of print in 73, these ideas come from way back, and they are going to be very useful, very good to have. So I think you're really going to enjoy this book. So, all right. Can I show two books? Um, do we have enough time for me to show? Yeah, we can show some books that we're keeping. Okay. I was going, when I was going, well, anyways, I pulled these ones out of the garage and um, was sorting through them. And I thought, well, maybe I should go through my books one more time that I had decided to keep just to see if there was any. So, and I did add, actually, that five-acre one. That five acre one, I added that just recently. Um, but then I started finding ones that I really love and I forgot I had. Now, this one is a really, really good one. Let me find my glasses. It's the Complete Homeopathy Home uh, Handbook Safe and Effective Ways to Treat Fevers, Coughs, Colds, Sore Throats, Childhood Ailments, Food Poisoning, Flus, and a uh, Wide Range of Everyday Complaints. And it is so detailed it gives you um, the description of a plant and it has a drawing of it and then it gives you um, how to find it and what it's good for and uh, how to harvest it and how to use it it's a really 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 good book it was printed in 1991 so I'm pretty sure you can still find this online the Miranda Castro. Miranda Castro. She was the writer of it. And so... So it's called the Complete Homeopathy Handbook. Handbook, yeah. And it says safe and effective ways to treat. Nothing crazy. It's just your typical fevers, coughs, and colds, and sore throats. But those very useful information. Cause yes. Who doesn't get those things in the wintertime? Every winter almost. Yeah, almost every winter. Well, not us. We didn't get it this winter. Yeah, we didn't get it this past winter. But a lot of times you get sick... Hey, you need some really good ways to do it. These are good natural home remedies. 
And aside from we pray to the Lord first. Yes, amen. And that's what we do first. Amen. But after we seek the Lord, we also seek natural remedies because we know the Lord has created things uh, in perfect balance, and we can use these natural things uh, as well. And the Lord will heal through that also. So I really was happy to find that. I forgot I had that. And then this one is Billy Joe Tandem. Uh, Billy Joe Tatum's. Tatum's. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Wild Foods Cookbook and Field Guide. Now this this one is really really good. This one um, takes you out into the foraging, gives you lots of pictures and drawings. And it takes each um, uh, mushrooms and herbs, uh, uh, ramps and leeks and may apples, and it tells you hickory nuts, huckleberry, huckleberry, how to identify it, and oh, grapes, wild grapes, um, how to identify it and how to use it, um, what it's good for um, medical wise or culinary wise. Um, it's just a, a really really good book, and then it tells you has recipes. Um, sometimes I've actually went um, foraging and brought stuff back, and I didn't. And I knew it was edible, but I didn't know how to use it, um, like the May apples. Um, and she actually has recipes for all of it. So whatever she has in here to show you how to find um, cattails, how to harvest cattails, um, and she also has recipes in the back. I really like that one. It's um, uh, this is from the '70s also. And it's called um, Billy Joe Tan Tan Tatum. Tatum. Thank you. I see want to say Tandem. Yeah, it's Billy Joe Tatum's Wild Foods Cookbook and Field Guide. And field now those two books we are keeping. We are keeping. Um, if I can find them on Amazon, what I'll do is I'll if I can find them on Amazon, I'll put the links in the description below. Uh, that way you can uh, go ahead and click on those. Uh, hopefully I can find them, but uh, we'll find out whenever I upload the video. Uh, so that's really all we have uh, yep. for today. Now, these are the three that we're going to be giving away, right? These three books right here. And I believe that anyone who uh, wins these books are going to be very, very happy with these books. Now, the other books that we showed, um, we have a lot of them. We do intend to give them all away. Yep. Uh, but, you know, first we hit 1,000 subs. We give these three away. Uh, whenever we get to 5,000 subs, we're going to have another book giveaway. And then we're going to have another book giveaway uh, when we hit 10,000 subs. Woohoo! You're so, thinking big, dear. Yeah, we're planning for the future. <laughs> so those are our signposts 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. And then uh, we'll go from there. Uh, <laughs> we'll probably have all of the books given away by then because right now we're only giving away three. When we get to 5,000, uh, I'm thinking we'll probably give away two groups of three. Yeah. And then anything that's left over, we're going to give away all the rest of them at the 10,000 mark. And then, yeah. And then we'll be out of these books that we're giving away. Uh, but then after we hit 10,000 subscribers, uh, whatever the next signpost happens to be, we will come up with something even better. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but we have to get there first. So it's all about if you help us get there. And we're not asking for people to subscribe to us um, just to subscribe. That's not really how we're looking at it. We don't like uh, that. We would like it if you would help promote our videos and let the content speak for itself. If we have videos that you like, share those videos. Um, and when you share those videos, each time you share a video or do a video review, saying all the good things that you like about it, um, and then put that up on your channel and point people to that video, uh, promoting that video that you like. Uh, if you do that, that is another entry into the contest. And as many times as you can do that to highlight different videos or share different videos to get these different entries, you get your name entered again and again and again. And what's the best way to win a drawing? Have as many names as possible in the hat. Um, but make sure that you give us a link so we could check on. Uh, well, they can't always give links on our on our comments. Oh, okay. But just let us know basically where to find it, and like whether it's you know tell us the name of your Facebook page, yes. or, or tell us to you know it's on your channel 
or tell us things like that. There's all kinds of ways you can tell us without actually putting a link in the in the comments because YouTube doesn't allow us to put links in comments. So I understand that, but uh, like oh. like if it's on your Facebook, say hey, it's on my Facebook, and uh, this is my Facebook thing. Or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, um, let's just make it different. Okay, instead of uh, putting the comments underneath the video, uh, you can actually send me an email. And I'm going to put it on the screen uh, whenever I go to uh, uh, edit this video. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. But it's uh, microfarmstarter at gmail.com. So you send a, an email to microfarmstarter at gmail.com uh, giving us a link. Now, you can do that in the email, right? Uh, give us a link to where we can find where you're promoting one of our videos uh, and send me that link uh, in my email and then I will find it and I will put your entry in the drawing. Uh, the whole purpose is to get as many other people, your family, your friends, people that come by your social media sites uh, to see something they normally wouldn't see and then that directs them there and then maybe if they like everything, they'll give us some more subscribers. And the sooner we get to 1,000, we'll give these books away. And as soon as we get to 5,000, we'll have another really big giveaway. And then when, as soon as we can get to 10,000, we'll have an even bigger giveaway. Uh, so it's going to get better and better, folks. Uh, so you help us, uh, and, and we want real subscribers. That's why we want to push our content. We want to push the content because if you don't like the content, sure, you subscribe, but you will never get a view after that. And that's not what we're trying to do. Uh, if you subscribe because you like the channel, because you like the videos, then you know maybe you'll watch more videos and we'll get more views. And that's really what it's all about. So thank you for uh, watching our not so live show. Uh, it was live recorded, but not live, uh, not live streamed. And uh, we'll put this up as soon as possible. And uh, uh, hopefully YouTube will get this cleared up uh, to where the live streams will start working again. But for whatever reason, probably because they're unrolling the new beta version of the, uh, the studio, uh, they're going to probably do away with Studio Classic. And in the transition, there's always technical issues that take place. So that's my guess. Uh, hopefully they'll get it fixed soon. Uh, but keep watching our videos. And hopefully we'll see you next Tuesday at 7. Boom.